I went down the scrapyard a couple of days ago, took some odds and ends of cable, this and that. Anyway, in amongst the wire was this big roll of very handy cable. And I know what size it is, but a lot of these cables, they used to have the size printed on them, but not anymore. So what I thought I'd do, because a lot of people are not familiar with this sort of thing, we'll go through how to measure this type of cable. So let's zoom in. So the cable size is to do with the the solid copper core. So it's the cross-sectional area of the copper. So you can't just measure this because there are seven strands there and there's a load of gap between it. So you have to measure each individual strand and then do a bit of arithmetic. So first of all, we'll get a vernier caliper. Switch it on and it's on millimetres. Try and do it so you can see it. Let's just get it square. It's 1.06. Let's try another one. 0.9 0.94 0 0.99 I'm assuming the average is about 1 mil and there are 7 of them but we need to work out what the cross sectional area of that is so let's just work this out the diameter is an average of about 1.05 millimeters okay now to get the area of a, a circle you need to use a formula which is pi and don't worry about that that's just a constant multiplied by the radius multiplied by itself and we write that as squared so pi is 3.142 <coughs> and if the radius if the if the diameter is 1.05 then the radius will be 0.5 and that's probably let's round it down to 2 okay we want 3.142 multiplied by that, multiplied by that again. Okay, so we'll just get the calculator out. Hopefully you can see that. 3.142 multiplied by 0.52 multiplied by 0.52 equals 0.849 so let's call that 0.85 equals 0.85 millimeter square per strand then we need to multiply that by 7 we'll put multiply by 7 equals 5.95 millimeters squared okay so that's six mil cable just to take this a bit further because it's a an ever-expanding subject the fatter the wire the more current go through it and the lower the voltage the more currents required for the given amount of wattage so let's say a kilowatt at 50 volts is nominally 20 amps but a kilowatt at 12 volts 
is nominally 80 amps so the fat so the lower the voltage the fatter the cable needs to be now I've just got another example this cable here it's somewhat fatter so you need to be square on to this stuff because if you're at an angle it will give you a seriously inaccurate reading so what's that 2.07 let's try another one Two point one two. Let's say an average is two point one. So if you use a cable that's too small for the given current, you'll get what's called volt drop. Where say you send ten amps in one end, you'll get ten amps the other end but it might be 50 volts and you might only get 45 volts the other side the other end of the cable and of course with Ohm's law if you reduce the volts then you reduce the wattage you'll have to look at the video about that I'll put a link if I remember in the description anyway we've got a diameter of 2.1 millimeters so pi r squared 3.142 multiplied by half of that 1.05 multiply 1.05 okay so let's get the calculator out 3.142 multiplied by 1.05 multiplied by 1.05 equals 3.46 equals 3.46 millimeters squared okay and so we need to multiply that by 7 equals multiply by 7 equals 24.2 24.2 millimeters squared so obviously you can put more current through that cable than the than the other one 